Let's see how much is then worth today. What exactly do you get with the same amount of money, but three years later? Hi guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to my channel. The GTX 1050 Ti was probably one of the most famous NVIDIA's entry-level model for the last couple of years, which is why I decided to run it against their current gen offering, the GTX 1650 Super Series. You're probably wondering why I didn't compare it with the regular GTX 1650 series, since its MSRP launch price is even more similar to the GTX 1050 Ti. And the reason why I did it like this is because the GTX 1650 Super Series offers a much better value for just a slight price increase, it makes more sense to give that extra $10 in order to get a more than a decent performance bump. It's safe to say that budget graphics card models are a pretty popular choice with users, before all on account of their general price point, and one great example of that among such is the GTX 1050 Ti series, which ended up grabbing users' attention the most on my channel. That said, the lower price point doesn't always mean a good value. For example, back in the day I've heard from a retailer that Nvidia was at the time selling models like the GT710 and GT730 the most, and those are, well, basically so strong that they're only good for outputting a video signal to the monitor, and that's pretty much it. You can forget 60fps 1080p gaming with new titles, or anything remotely related to that. The GT710 is actually still holding on, placed at number 10 on the most sold graphics cards list on the Amazon. Albeit they aren't making a lot of money on it since those are very low priced products, so the profit margins aren't that good. But the point is that customers are not getting a product with a good price to performance ratio. Of course, there's a reason why people are buying this GPU or other models like it, but a bit newer, like the GT1030. But if it's not because you need a GPU this exact second to get your PC going for as cheap as possible, just to output a video signal to a monitor, it's better that you just save a little bit of more money in order to get something that will get you a better value. This is why I love doing content like this, in hope that it will reach new users and help them decide their next purchase. I went a bit off track, but nevertheless, it's good to have the whole backstory, so to speak. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, because in the next few days, I am also going to do a comparison of the GTX 1650 Super to its next of Superkin, the GTX 1660 Super, so many Supers. It's going to be interesting to see how far apart they are performance-wise. In particular, is the GTX 1660 Super worth that much extra, or will it just be better off with the GTX 1650 Super? Although it's been 3 years between their launches, the generational gap is pretty minimal, one basically came after the other, Turing after Pascal, and that's if you don't count in the enterprise-only oriented Volta series, so it's hard to expect any major difference on account of the change in the GPU's architecture, unless it's something really revolutionary in question. So, where does the new GTX 1650 Super get its added performance difference in comparison to the GTX 1050 Ti? Well, putting them side by side, the GTX 1650 Super has 1280 CUDA cores, while the GTX 1050 Ti has 786, which is a difference of 512 CUDA cores, or roughly 67%. Remember this percentage number for later on when we take a look at the benchmarking results. Obviously, with this increase, we also have more texture units, 80 versus 48, while the number of ROPs is the same. Another major difference comes from the implementation of GDDR6 video memory on the GTX 1650 Super instead of the GDDR5 on the GTX 1050 Ti. Although the video memory size remained the same between them, 4GB of it, as well as the width of the memory bus, 128 bits, this change in GDDR technology bumped up the memory bandwidth to 192GB per second, so that's a memory data rate of 12 gigabits per second compared to the 7 gigabits per second with the GTX 1050 Ti, which is a decent bump. So in conclusion, it's not that you will be getting more on account of the architecture being super new and super effective, although the name maybe suggests otherwise, but rather because of the fact that you are getting a more equipped GPU configuration, that being the larger amount of CUDA cores in combination with also higher stock core clock frequency of the GPU. Of course, that's when you compare their official reference stock figures, because this can differ from manufacturer to manufacturer and their factory overclock, but in this case that's not so important since we are looking at the bigger picture here. Again, before I show you my benchmarking results, if you have any questions or other concerns about these two cards, feel free to leave me your comment down below and I will try to help you out. And down there, in the description box to be precise, 
you will also find my setup which I use here to test out this GPU. The core components are as per usual, Intel 6 core Core i5 8600K CPU overclocked to 5.1 GHz and paired with 2 times 8 GB of 3000 MHz DDR4 RAM. Just a quick side note, I've only used 1080p resolution for my testing this time, since the GTX 1050 Ti can't cope with 1440p resolution in newer titles and at high graphic settings, being it because of the video memory size or lack of raw power, as even the GTX 1650 Super barely manages to get by, let alone it. Of course, this doesn't mean you cannot play at 1440p resolution, you can, but with some compromises, although you would be better off if you look at some of the more optimized or other still popular and timeless titles. If you want to check out how the GTX 1650 Super performs at 1440p resolution, feel free to watch my review of it, I'll put a link to it in the right top corner of this video. Taking a closer look at the results, the performance increase that the GTX 1650 Super brings in is in most of the cases well above 50% compared to the GTX 1050 Ti, actually it's in between that and the 80% mark, with an average of around 70% of performance increase across 10 games which I used here, not counting in the Heaven benchmarks. The more resolution intense benchmarks don't see as much gain, like the Fire Strike Ultra which runs at 4K resolution, but this was expected on account of the lower video memory size and memory bandwidth capabilities. Obviously, with having a larger CUDA core count and overall a more beefed up graphics card in basically every aspect of it, the power consumption must go up. The GTX 1650 Super pulls around 25 to 30 watts more compared to the GTX 1050 Ti in the worst case scenario, that being Fermax GPU stress test, while overall that's around 130 watts instead of the 100 to 105 watts of power consumption for the GTX 1050 Ti, which again goes to show why does the GTX 1650 Super delivers more performance. As for the GPU temperatures, I don't think there's a point in commenting it, since everything depends on the cooler setup, and this differs from manufacturer to manufacturer, but we can agree upon the fact that in general the GTX 1650 Super will emit more heat on account of the higher official TDP figures for its GPU, that being 100 watts instead of the 75 watts with the GTX 1050 Ti. Having such a power consumption figure, the GTX 1650 Super and its non-Super brother will not have a version where they don't need an additional PCI Express power connector, which can be seen on some of the GTX 1050 Ti models, and that makes it really practical since you don't need a beefy power supply, and that's a bit of a downside for the GTX 1650 series, unless some of the board partners makes a pretty underpowered and underwhelmed version of it, but I think that the performance jump wouldn't be that impressive in that case. Speaking of that power consumption, if we average in the FPS figures across all of those 10 games and divide that number with the power consumption of the cards, you would get around 0.6 FPS per watt of power for the GTX 1650 Super, instead of around 0.5 FPS per watt of power for the GTX 1050 Ti, which makes the GTX 1650 Super a bit more efficient than it. This in a way confirms the theory about this generation not having any major performance increase when it comes to the efficiency of the architecture compared to its predecessor, as basically for the most part percentage-wise it corresponds to that new GPU hardware configuration and increased number of components on it, those being the added CUDA cores, which is achieved thanks to lowering down the manufacturing process from 14 to 12 nanometers, and that's exactly what we get a bit below 70% more CUDA cores gets us around 70% performance gain in comparison to the GTX 1050 Ti, which is why I told you to remember that percentage number at the beginning of the video, backed up with the higher GPU clock speed and GDDR6 video memory, which give it that edge in efficiency and a little bit of extra performance. But this topic is not so important, or to say it's not what we came for, because as buyers of graphics cards, especially models that are in this budget segment, we are always in search for a value deal, the bottom line so to speak. With that said, if we do the same math as we did with the performance per watt calculation, but using their MSRP launch price instead of the power consumption, and those are basically the same, $140 to $150 for the GTX 1050 Ti at the time and $160 for the GTX 1650 Super, the price per frame for it is just shy of $2, instead of around $3 for the GTX 1050 Ti, proving that this generation makes even more sense value-wise as you're paying around 30% less per frame.
In conclusion, you will get substantially more performance for basically the same amount of money, just like you can today for the same amount of money get a double or triple the capacity of an SSD drive compared to two or three years ago. Everything considered, that sounds like a pretty good deal if you ask me, especially for gamers who are on the budget. That's it for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, please take a second to toss me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content, that really helps a lot, and if you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe and if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below so you don't miss out on a new video, and until then, catch you later guys!